Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. X, 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 X minus, 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 one, 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 one. Tonight's story, The Parade by George Lefferts. You are Mr. Sid Ryan? The same. My name is Lucia. I'm a Martian. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Lu... What was that again? A Martian. A Martian, huh? As in Orson Welles? Precisely. I'm a Rotarian myself. Sit <laughs> down. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, now that we've had our little joke, Mr. Lucia, what can Publicity Associates do for you? It has been my observation that advertising and publicity are the very backbone of earthly civilization. Spoken like a true Martian, Mr. Lucia. Now, if you'll tell me the name of the client. The client, of course, will be the Martian. <laughs> you don't give up, do you? Give up? The gag, I mean. Oliver. Oh, yes, Mr. Ryan? This is Mr. Lucia. Oh, how do you Mr. Do, Mr. Lucia Lush? claims to be a Martian. Take him outside, will you, Oliver? Get the name of the sanatorium he escaped from and tell them to bring the butterfly net. Wait, sir. I'm happy to see, Mr. Ryan, that my telling you I'm a Martian has approximately the effect I supposed it would have. I believe we can do business. I have here the cash retainer of $5,000. Five thousand. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Lucia. Uh, uh, Oliver, get the client a cigar. Yes, sir. Uh, no, 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 the other box, the other box. Thank you, no. Uh, well, now, uh, what can I do for you, sir? I wish you to manage a publicity campaign, a very large. A very important campaign. Is the product established, or is it something brand new? Oh, something quite new. Now, what would you judge to be the most effective type of campaign? Well, if the client has a lot of dough to throw around, a suspense campaign is best. First, you place ads in the paper saying, watch this space. Mm. Then, about a week later, you run an ad saying XYZ or PDQ, and you get people guessing what it means. Mm. Then, finally, when you've teased them enough, you bust loose and... Unveil the product. Excellent. Very well, sir. We shall conduct a suspense campaign. Of course, in this kind of campaign, secrecy is very important. Once the name of the product leaks out, it spreads like wildfire, and the whole campaign is kerfloppo. <clears throat> yes, quite so, quite so. Utmost secrecy. That's right. Uh, you uh, realize, of course, these things cost like crazy would say one million dollars cover the expense? Uh, come again? I said would one million dollars cover it. Uh, yes, I imagine. Uh, you did say one million dollars. I understood that you had handled some very large accounts. Of course, if this is too big. Oh, not at all. Not at all. As a matter of fact, I seldom touch anything less. Uh, right, Oliver? Huh? Oh, 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 of course. That's right, Mr. Ryan. Absolutely right. Good. You will begin, then, by saturating the newspapers, the radio, streetcars, with a very simple statement. What's that? I shall write it for you. The Martians are coming. <laughs> Say, that's not a bad teaser. Got that, Oliver? Yes, sir. The next ad will read, June 1st is Martian Day. June 1st is Martian Day. What happens on June 1st? The parade takes place. What parade? 
I wish you to arrange a parade up Fifth Avenue. You mean like the uh, Macy Parade? Exactly. Except that the theme will be the world of tomorrow. The Martian world. Uh, my client would like it to be a, a gay affair. Balloons, clowns, pennants, pretty drum majorettes. Hey, that sounds terrific. I might be able to interest the department stores in a tie-in. The uh, parade will climax the campaign. On June 1st, the product will be unveiled. Good enough. Uh, by the way, Mr. Lucia, just what is the product? Uh, what are we selling? <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Ryan. Secrecy, remember. Oh, but after all... All will be revealed to you in good time, Mr. Ryan. Moment, let us say we are selling a concept. A uh, concept? Precisely. Concept of invasion from Mars. Uh, Benny Marcus, please. This is Benny. Uh, Benny, this is Sid Ryan over at Publicity Associates. Listen, Benny, how are you fixed for midgets? I got midgets. Fine. I need 40 midgets for a parade. 40. June 1st. And listen, Benny, I want them dressed in little space suits. What? You know, like men from Mars, okay? Midgets. And I want some movie extras, uh, maybe 50 of them. Also rigged up like men from Mars. Make them look gruesome. Got that? Gruesome. Also, I need some horses with uh, pretty girls on top of them. Maybe you can get that bunch from Moroni's Traveling Circus. The ones we booked for the Fireman's Parade in Albany last year. Oh, that's right, sir. And never mind the expense. Just get me the talent, okay? I, uh, I, I gotta hang up now. Uh, call me back, Benny. How you doing, Oliver? Oh, fine, Mr. Ryan. Just fine. We got full-page ads in all the dailies and ten-second spot announcements on every local station. <laughs> but it's costing a fortune. The more it costs, the bigger our percentage. Spend like you are going to the electric chair, Oliver. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, how are you making out on the parade? If it comes off, it'll be the biggest thing since Barnum invented the midget. I've got Macy's, Gimbel's, and Saks to contribute floats. Everything is built around the Martian theme, see? Even the horses will have long feelers attached to them and uh, funny-looking extra legs. It'll be sensational. Oh, yeah, yeah. It sounds fine, only... Uh... Only what? Oh, Mr. Ryan, we don't even know what we're selling. <laughs> Oliver, my boy, do you think old Sid Ryan has been sitting here spending all this moolah and not putting two and two together? You mean you know who Lucia represents? Just by accident, understand? I have learned that Century Pictures is making a big new epic. A space opera entitled Invasion from Mars. Get it? Oh, oh, I begin to see. Uh, also, by mere coincidence, it happens to be the premiere sometime around June 1st. Do you follow me? But Mr. Ryan, Century has an exclusive contract with New Features Syndicate for all their publicity. Suppose Century Pictures doesn't like the way New Features is handling their stuff. They want to get out of the contract, but New Features says no. So they have to get around the contract. A man named Lucia, client unknown, starts publicizing the Martian invasion. Need I go further? Oh, I get it, Mr. Ryan. I... Gee, I suppose I should have thought of that. No, Oliver, that's what I like about you. You're so innocent. <laughs> yeah, let me talk to Commissioner Patrick, please. Sid Ryan. Mish, Sid Ryan. Oh, it's you. <laughs> well, what is it this time? If you want to drop a man off the Empire State Building into a teacup full of water, the answer is no. <laughs> also, we are not arresting any fan dancers. You know I don't handle fan dancers. I want a permit for a parade, June 1st, 5th Avenue. It's a Sunday. There's no traffic. Oh, come now. Look, Ryan. Macy's gets a permit. Gimbel's gets a permit. The American Legion gets a permit. The Sons of Aaron march every time Morton Downey sings the wearing of the green. Don't give me a hard time, Patrick. This is too big. Oh, I have God. the Fifth Avenue Merchants Association behind me. Okay, Ryan. Fill out the forms. I'll pass them along to the license commissioner. That's my boy. Oh, by the way, what's the occasion? Oh, don't you read the papers, Patrick? June 1st is Martian Day. <laughs> Well, 
Mr. Ryan. How is the campaign going? Like fire, Mr. Lucia, like fire. Everybody and his brother is going along with the gang. Yesterday, we distributed 50,000 Martian hats to school kids. I even arranged for Commissioner Patrick to accept a $50,000 check for the Policeman's Benevolent Fund from the man from Mars. <laughs> I, um, I understand Century Pictures spent over a million bucks making that space opera. A big pardon? Oh, come, come, Mr. Lucia. Sid Ryan wasn't born yesterday, you know. I know who our client is, even if you don't admit it. You do? Always thinking that's me. Well, as long as you know, let's keep it to ourselves, shall we, Mr. Ryan? As you once remarked, when these things leak out, it destroys the surprise and ruins the effectiveness of the campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ron Hyland <clears throat> speaking to you from our portable transmitter atop the reviewing stand for the much heralded Martian Parade on Fifth Avenue. Beautiful sunlit day here in New York. Perfect day for a parade. And the streets are packed with thousands of spectators, all eager to find out what this is all about. There's an air of shrill expectancy. Come on, over here! Okay, tell them all right. Uh, I just had word from Sal Brown at the Central Park Mall that the Martians have landed from Big Pink Balloon. And uh, while we're waiting here for the arrival of the parade, we brought some people up to our microphone to tell you their reactions to this spectacular affair. Uh, what's your name, madam? Miss Ada Shackley. A little louder, please. Miss Ada Shackley. And uh, where are you from, Mrs. I'm Shackley? Columbus, Ohio. I see. <laughs> and I see you have your family with you, two little curly-headed boys. Uh, are you in New York for your vacation? Yeah, we came for the Shriners Convention with their daddy. Well, uh, Mama, what do you think of Martian Day, Mrs. Shackley? Well, it all seems very strange to me, but the boys have been pestering me to watch it, so we've been standing here for two hours. I can't make head or tail of it. Uh, well, neither can a lot of other people, Mrs. Shackley, but judging by the thousands here already, there's a lot of curiosity. Curiosity killed a cat. Mama, so Mama. Uh, let's hope not. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Shackley. And now, here's the... Here they come, ladies and gentlemen. The first units of the big Martian parade swinging down to the Avenue. Fanfare, colored streamers, music, confetti, floats, all the tracks of the Mardi Gras. Let's listen to the band for a minute. Here in the vanguard, the whole group of little midgets in weird-looking pink and blue spaces, carrying rude Goldberg weapons with signs painted on them. I can read one which says, Atomic Blaster. Another has a placard reading, We're Martians through Georgia. And here come the clowns, laughing and falling all over each other. They're giving free sugar candy to the kids along the way. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a happy, laughing crowd along Fifth Avenue today. A true reflection of a great sense of humor and good nature that makes America the place it is. Why only... What's this? The crowd's murmuring now. They've fallen somewhat silent. Something coming. I'll try to get it for you. What? Uh, oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the Martian contingent. This is promised as the climax of the show. And now a great hush has fallen over the crowd. It's quite a sight to see these thousands of people standing here expectantly, hearing only the great regular sigh of their mass breathing. And now here they come, ladies and gentlemen. The Martians, marching in booted, helmeted ranks, row after row of them. This is an impressive sight, ladies and gentlemen. And around a serious contrast to the rest of these, the joyous slapstick parade we've been witnessing up in the mouth. There are perhaps, oh, 200 tall, broad-chested men dressed in metallic gray space suits with thick glass visors drawn across their faces. Each one's holding an ominous-looking ray gun at the ready position. They're marching in absolute silence, keeping steps perfectly as though some new unspoken command is marking down for them. Even the children are awed by the unexpected warlike realism of the Martian Legion. And now the first ranks of the Martians move past us, down Fifth Avenue, toward the reviewing stands at the square. No one moves. <laughs> there. A woman. A woman, ladies and gentlemen, just dashed out into the street. For what reason, I don't know. She just slipped through the police cordon somehow. They're after her now. 
but she's already reached the ranks of the marches, and she's trying to lift the visor of one of the Martian space fields. Wait, wait. She's fallen. She screamed and then fell forward in a dead faint. The Martian column keeps right on coming. Unless they break ranks, they're going to trample her. No, no, no. The police have, policemen have got her now. They're, they're dragging her away. Out of the way. They're trying to revive her now. Uh, all sorts of rumors have begun filtering back through the crowd. Some are even whispering that the woman's dead. We don't know yet, but whatever's happened, the incident seems to have cast a slight shadow over the mood of the crowd. The carefree holiday air seems to have vanished. The crowd is stirring uneasily. A little disturbed at what we've, what we've just seen. But nothing to be alarmed at, however. It just, it just seems a shame that anything like this should happen to spoil our enjoyment of the Martian parade. Did you see that? A woman fainted. She ran out into the street to get a close look at the Martians. Then, then she screamed and fainted dead away. I'm well aware of that, Oliver, since I paid her 50 bucks to do it. What? The dramatic moment, Oliver. The stock and trade of the good publicity man. Relax. Holy smoke. She sure think of everything. For my share of this deal, roughly $100,000, I can afford to think of everything. Shut the window. Oh, okay, but don't you want to see the finish? We'll get down to the reviewing stand for the finish. Right now, I want to make a phone call. Uh, by the way, where's Lucia? I haven't seen her. Well, uh, close the window, Oliver. Well, I... Okay, Mr. Ryan. Marcus Town Agency. Benny, this is Sid Ryan. Oh, I say, listen, Sid, I was going to call you. I'm awful sorry about those Martians. What do you mean, sorry? They're terrific. No, don't joke, Sid. I mean it. Oh, I mean it, too. They're great, great. Are you in a bag? Never felt better. You mean it, don't you? Of course I mean it. What is this? There are Martians in the parade? About 150. Of course, I only ordered 50, Sid. but under the circumstances... Sid. What is it? Sid, don't you know I couldn't get you a single movie extra? There's a studio strike in New York. Huh? Wait a minute. Where would these guys come from if you didn't hire them? I don't know. Hold on. Oliver. Oh, yes, Mr. Ryan? Did you hire those Martians? Well, no, sir. I didn't... Benny, have... this is on the level, isn't it? Oh, yes, Sid. I... Will... Okay, Benny, I'll, I'll call you back. What's the matter, Mr. Ryan? Well, no. Just don't know. Wonder flu shot. What's um, Century Pictures number? Tremaine 4, 1000. Tremaine 4, 1000. Century picture, old star. Uh, give me Marty Sanford, your publicity director. One moment, please. Sanford. Uh, Marty, this is Sid Ryan. Oh, hello, Sid. How's it Fine, big... fine. Listen, Marty, this is dead serious. On the level, get it? What's wrong? I've got to locate Lucia. Uh, Lou who? Lucia, come on now, Marty. This is life and death. The guy you sent over to hire me for the invasion picture. I've never heard of a guy named Lucia. And, uh, what invasion picture? Invasion from Mars, the space opera. Are you Marty. The picture was shelved last month. What? Sure, back in the can. The big shots decided you can't sell a Martian invasion to the American public. Too incredible, Sid. <laughs> Who'd ever believe it could really happen? Of all the great... Mother in heaven. What is it, Mr. Ryan? You look terrible. Too fantastic. Fantastic. Mr. Ryan, is something wrong? Open that window. I, I want another look at those Martians. Look at him. Oliver, you were in the army. Could 150 movie extras learn to march like that in, say, uh, 24 hours? No. Not in 24 days, Mr. Ryan. Not a second's hesitation. Not one out of step. Look at the way they carry those ray guns at the ready. The only other time I've seen troops march like that was in a film of the Nazi SS troops marching through the streets of Paris. Mr. Ryan. Oliver, get down there. Find that woman who painted. Her name's Gloria Montez. Get her up here. Make it fast. <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Ryan. I can't get much sense out of her. Stay away from me. Okay, Gloria. You can cut out the act and relax. Don't it's me, me. Don't Sid me Ryan. Down, Gloria, settle You're down. Baby, it's me, Sid. The... It's awful. It's those big green eyes and those feelings like a catfish. Baby, snap out of it. Listen, what happened down there? You ran out and screamed like I told you, but the fainting, that wasn't in the act. Go 
away, please. Go away. Just one question, baby. Inside that helmet, what did you see? Out of her, Ryan. She needs a doctor. Okay, Oliver. I've heard enough anyway. You take care of Gloria. Get her a drink. Where are you going? To see the commissioner. You've got to stop this parade before things begin to happen. Okay, Ryan, what's the beef? Listen, Patrick, I don't know what it is, see, but something's wrong. You've got to stop that parade. I suppose you'd like the riot squad. That would get you a front page spread on every paper in town. Now, look, Ryan. I've got no time for your cheap publicity gags. I'm a busy man. Listen, I'm trying to tell you I don't know where those Martians came from, who they are, anything about them. Oh, Ryan, I'm wise to your tricks. Now, if you let the sergeant show you... Uh... You won't do it, huh? An honest citizen appeals for protection and you refuse... I most emphatically do. Now, beat it. All right, Patrick. I'll go right to the mayor's office. I'll have you busted, flattered in the fried egg. Go ahead. I'm sure his honor will be glad to toss you out on that phony, nickel-plated skull of yours. <laughs> You heard me, Ryan. You can't see the mayor. Adolf, please. This isn't a gag. I don't want publicity. All I want to do is maybe prevent something horrible from happening. In case you don't know it, wise guy, something horrible is already happening. A couple of hundred little kids are in the hospital with tremaine poisoning from that phony Martian candy you passed out. What? Or didn't you know? I... I didn't. We've got to stop that parade. Sure, you'd like nothing better than to start upon it now. Maybe a few hundred people get trampled to death. Think of the newspaper's face. That'd get you and your phony product. I won't stand for this, Adolf. This may be a matter of life and death. Don't get out of here, Queen. It'll be your death. Go on, beat it. Get out. You and your publicity, son. Make me sick to my stomach. Oliver. Oliver. Oliver, where are you? Oliver, I... Oliver. Oliver! It is useless to scream at him, Mr. Iron. Your friend is quite dead. Lucia. He wanted to run to the police with some story about a Martian invasion. I found it necessary to restrain him. Restrain him, you stinking murderer. Now, no, no, Mr. Ryan, collect yourself. After all our planning, it wouldn't do to have everything spoiled now, would it? Lucia, I'll start talking and talk fast, because when you get through, I'm going to take you apart piece by piece. What's this all about? Surely you know, Mr. Ryan. After all, you've been publicizing it for months. See, before colonizing your planet, the Martian government sent some of us as scouts in advance, disguised as Earthmen, of course, to study your habits, your weaknesses. We found that the people on Earth are predominantly conditioned by advertising and publicity. So we conceived the idea of treating our entire invasion as a vast publicity stunt. <laughs> Clever, yes? After all, Mr. Ryan, who would suspect an invader who advertised his invasion in the newspaper, invited the public to his surprise attack, and spent millions publicizing his plan? Holy jumping. You've done very well, you see. Then there was no product. Ah, but there is the product. The product is... Yes. What are you trying, Lucia? We Martians are a humane people, Mr. Ryan. We do not like to destroy thousands where a few hundred will suffice. In exactly two minutes... Our troops will treat the world to a spectacle of death, which will bring the rest of your planet to its knees in horror. Nations will clamor to surrender. Perhaps, Mr. Lucia, but not if I can help. No, no, no. Yes, please? Operator, this is Mr. Ryan. Get me the field telephone on the reviewing stand of the Martian Day Parade. Hurry. Anyone in particular? Just hurry. Get me Commissioner Patrick. Hello? Hello? You have to talk louder. I want Commissioner Patrick. Hello? Patrick, Patrick! Wait a minute. Things are quieting down. Hey, what was that you wanted? This is Ryan. I have to talk to the Commissioner. It's a matter of life and death. Oh, you can't talk to him now. The Chief Martian is presenting the PBA check to him. The Martians are going to fire a salute. Listen, you've got to stop him. What? Stop him! I'm sorry, Mr. Ryan. I can't hear you. You idiot. The worst is going to... Doesn't matter. Nothing matters now.
Tonight by transcription, X-1 has brought you The Parade. Written by George Lefferts. Featured in the cast were Joseph Curtin as Ryan, Barry Kroger as Lushar, Alexander Scorby as Ron Heilman. Music by Albert Berman. X-1 was produced by Van Woodward and directed by Edward King. Fred Collins speaking. X-1 is an NBC Radio Network production. And now, next week, The Cave of the Night, the gripping story of the first man to pilot an Earth satellite beyond the reach of gravitational pull, and of what happened when a watching world learned that something had gone wrong, that he could never return, that he was doomed to die a lingering death in the arching blackness of the sky, the Cave of Night. Hear it next week at X. Minus one. Did you ever stop to realize that four American coins show us the importance of elections? The first one is the Washington Quarter. It was George Washington who reminded us that on the unity of our government depends our independence, our peace at home and abroad, our safety, prosperity, and our freedom. The second coin is the Jefferson Nickel. It was Thomas Jefferson who said, no government can continue good but under the control of the people. The third coin is a penny bearing the likeness of Abraham Lincoln, who said, Among free men, there can be no successful appeal from the ballot to the bullet. Finally, the Roosevelt dime reminds us of something Franklin D. Roosevelt once said. Every man and every woman in this nation, regardless of party, who have the right to register and to vote, and the opportunity to register and to vote, have also the sacred obligation to register and to vote. These four Americans, by recognizing the importance of elections, added another page to your political history. <laughs>